Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to go over how to intertwine different elements within Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. I thought it'd be really fun to create different floral and foliage elements and then intertwine them into text. But you can apply the same method to any type of elements. It doesn't have to be lettering and definitely doesn't have to be florals or foliage. As always, the color palette to this project is entirely free. You can find it in the video description. So just tap in there and you can download that and install it and be good to go. For this project, we're only using two brushes. One is my free mono weight brush. I'll leave a link in the video description to that. And then the other brush is my mono marker brush, which you see me using quite a bit in a lot of my tutorials. It's one of my favorite textured brushes. It's part of my Font Lovers Procreate brush set, which I will also leave a link to in the video description. So I'm going to create a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 DPI, and then we'll be all set to go. Okay, I've got my canvas all set. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the background color. So tap on your layers palette and then tap on background color and choose this darker kind of medium blue right here. And that will set our background color. And then on the next layer, we're going to drop in our lettering. So I'm just going to label this one, hello. And I'm going to grab my lightest whitish color right here. I'm going to grab that mono weight brush. So this brush size is about 20%. I'm just going to write hello all the way across my canvas, but you can choose any word that you'd like. All right, now that I've got my lettering all set, now it's time to start creating those floral and foliage elements. So I'm going to begin by creating some simple leaves in the background and then we'll kind of add on all the other elements after that. So I'm going to come up to my layers palette, create a brand new layer, and I'm going to keep all of my floral and foliage elements on different layers to begin with and then we'll start putting things together as we intertwine the different elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my light green, this kind of minty color right here. And I'm going to use my mono weight brush again for this, only I'm going to reduce the size down to about 10%. And I'm just going to draw in a few lines. That way I can make sure that these are definitely going to intertwine with my words. So I'm going to draw a line that kind of comes through both of my L's. So I know that I'll have elements that are intertwining there. I'll have another one that kind of comes down towards the top of this L, and then maybe one that comes through my O a little bit two. Okay, and then over here, I definitely want an element to come through my H. All right, so now I can draw in my leaves, and these are really, really simple leaves. So I'm just going to create my shape and then kind of alternate as I go down. All right, so I'm just going to fill in these leaves now by just grabbing my color and dropping it in. Okay, next we're going to add just a few small details to these leaves just to make them a little bit more interesting than they are right now. So I'm going to create a new layer and grab my darker green color right here. It's the last one on the end. And then I'm going to grab my mono marker brush and the size of this brush is at 10%. And I'm just going to draw lines in the leaves, really simple lines. Okay, so I'm going to group these two layers together to just slide each one to the right so they're both selected, hit group, and I'm going to label this green leaves. Okay, close this up, create a brand new layer, and I'm going to drag this layer beneath my green leaves group, and I'm going to select the color blue, and I'm going to keep my mono marker selected, and now I'm going to draw in some really simple berries. I'm going to make the size of this brush about 20%. And then the same thing we did before, just keep in mind of where you want things intertwining. And then for the berries, you're just going to create a circle, fill it in, and then put three little details right at the very top. Okay, I'm going to label this layer berries. And now we're going to add in some flowers. So I'm going to create a new layer right above my green leaves group. First, we're going to create the stems of these flowers. So I'm going to grab my darkest color, which is a really dark green right here. It's almost hard to see it in the palette, but it's all the way at the bottom and on the end, it's the fourth one. Select that. I'm going to grab my mono weight brush once again and draw in those stems. My brush size for this is about 8%.
Okay, I've only put a few of these ones in here because I don't want it to get too busy. So now I'm going to drop in my flower. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the stem layer and grab my lightest pink color right here. And I'm going to return to my monomarker brush and draw bells. So the bell shape looks like this. And then you're just going to draw some scalloped edges in the center and then roughly color it in. The extra texture in here will be a really good contrast next to the mono weight brush. Okay, and now we're just going to drop in a few small details to these flowers. So create a new layer right above your flower layer. Grab your orange color right here. We're sticking with our mono marker brush. I'm going to reduce my brush size down to 10% and then just draw in a few lines into these flowers. And then the last thing we need to do with these flowers is just add an extra bit of leaf detail around the flower itself. So create a new layer at the very top. We're going to grab our darkest color once again, so it's the fourth one on the bottom, and then return to your mono weight brush. And we're just going to draw some leaf details around the petals. All right, and now I wanna add a little bit of extra brightness to my piece. So I'm going to add in some background solid kind of large leaves that are just background supporting elements. So I'm going to first group all of my flower elements together. That way they don't get mixed up with anything new that I put here. So I'm going to slide all of these over to the right, group them together and just call these ones large flowers. And then right above my hello layer, I'm going to create a new layer and grab my lime green right here. I'm going to keep my mono weight brush selected and then just draw some really large leaves for the background just to support it. All right, so the last little detail that I like throwing in are some floating, really simple flowers. That way we can have this perception of depth with the different layerings that we're going to achieve by intertwining this with our lettering. So I'm just going to create some really small, simple flowers right above my hello layer. So create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my orange color right here and my mono marker brush. That way I keep that really nice texture so I have that really good contrast between my floral elements and my leafy elements. So I'm just going to draw in some really simple five petal flowers right here and roughly color them in once again. Okay, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to the centers of these flowers that they that way they still look like flowers. So create a brand new layer right above your mini flowers layer. And I'm going to grab my white color, keep my mono marker, and just drop in a few small dots in the center. Okay, once we have all of our mini flowers done, we're going to group those two layers together and call it mini flowers. Okay, so now we are ready to begin layering and intertwining all of our elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is group all of our elements together. That way we have these in the background. If we ever need them in the future, I always make sure that I keep everything layered separately. That way, if you're working for a client, you can always go back and change it easily. If you flatten this right now and someone needs a change later on, or if you change your mind about something, you have to recreate the entire thing if you wanna separate elements. This way, it's a more non-destructive workflow, so you can always return back to this and make adjustments as needed in the future. So this is super important. So I'm going to duplicate this group. I'm going to turn off my reserve group right here. So I've got these in the future if I need them. And now we're going to work with this group. Now, if we flatten different elements, it's okay because we can always go back if we need to. All right, hopefully that all makes sense. In this brand new group, now we're going to begin flattening our different elements. That way we can more easily intertwine them. So for my large flowers, I am going to flatten these. So tap on your layer thumbnail and choose flatten. And now all of these are together. For our green leaves, we're also going to flatten these. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten. Same thing with our mini flowers. So right now the different layers that we have are our flowers, our green leaves, our background leaves, our berries, and our mini flowers. So we're going to start by adding a shadow to our flowers. So you're just going to select the layer, so tap on the layer thumbnail, choose select. We're going to create a new layer right underneath it. 
Grab your darkest green color right here, fill that layer, so tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, this is totally optional. We're just adding a little bit of shadow, that way we can create some extra depth here. So now I've got a layer that's this exact same shape, only it's all dark colored now, so we can use it as a shadow. So I'm going to tap that layer down just a little bit so it reads as more of a shadow. And then I'm going to add a blur to it. We've got this edge right here where we can see our shadow. And then you're going to tap on your magic wand tool and choose Gaussian blur. And we're just going to slide this up to about 3%. So it's subtle, but it's definitely there. All right, so we can zoom out and see what that looks like. We've got that nice depth appearing as it's overlapping different elements. So now we're going to merge these two together. So all you have to do is pinch them, and now these two are together. All right, so now we can begin intertwining, and we're only going to apply that shadow to our flowers, that way we've got that sense of depth. If you'd like to apply it to different elements, feel free to do it, now you know how. All right, so for this intertwining, we're going to select our lettering. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose Select. Down here, you're going to hit Invert, Head over to your flower layer that we were just working in, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose mask. If you're unfamiliar with layer mask, I have an entire video that explains exactly what everything means. So I'll link it up on this video and in the video description. If you're brand new to Procreate, I would definitely recommend checking that out before moving forward. That way you kind of understand when you paint in white or when you paint in black. So you can see right here, we've got a mask applied to this layer and we can deselect now. We don't need anything selected still. Now you can see all of our flowers are behind behind our lettering because we've masked it away. And if we want the flowers to appear on top of the lettering, if I want this flower on top of my white lettering, all I have to do is select layer mask. So you wanna make sure that the brighter blue is on the layer mask and you have to paint in white. So in order to get to white, all you have to do is dub double tap where the white is and you can get true white. And then I like painting in with my mono weight brush right here. And all I have to do is paint that in and that will reveal it. Right now it was hidden, so by painting in white it reveals. An easy way to remember that is white reveals, black conceals. So anything you want covered up needs to be painted in black, anything you want to appear needs to be painted in white. And if you look at the mask, you can see where I painted in white in that upper corner of the L. So now it's revealed, whereas the rest of the lettering is black. So right down here, we can see we've got a bunch of different elements intertwining with each other. I want this part revealed, so I'm going to paint in white right here, and I want this one revealed, so I'll paint in white right here. But I want this one to stay behind my lettering. That way it looks like it's overlapping, underlapping, overlapping. It creates a nice visual effect. I'm going to keep this one behind the lettering. This one I'm going to have cover that little part of the H. And up here, we're going to overlap and then underlap. So it's totally up to you what portions you want overlapped or underlapped. I'm just kind of alternating as I look at it all. Okay, so now we can go to our next elements. The flowers are totally done. So we can come to our green leaves now. We're going to do the exact same things. So tap on your lettering, choose select, invert the selection. So just tap on the invert icon right here. Return to your layers. We're working on our green leaves layer. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose mask. And now we're going to paint in white again wherever we want it to appear on top. Re make sure you deselect before you start painting. So just tap on that little icon up there. All right, so we're working with these medium green colored leaves. So maybe I'm going to keep that element behind. I want this leaf to be on top. So I'm just painting in white. That one will be behind. This one will be on top. All right, moving on, we're going to do our berries next. So once again, select your lettering, invert, head over to the layer that you wanna work on. So in this case, it's the berries layer, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose mask, deselect and now paint in white. Okay, the last one that we have are these big lime green leaves. So we're going to do the same thing. So tap on your layer thumbnail, select, invert, Head over to your leaf layer, mask, deselect. And I actually think I wanna keep all of my large green leaves in the background, that way they're supporting elements and I can create that extra layer of depth. 
I am noticing that they seem a little bit bright right here, so no problem. We can just reduce the opacity to make sure that they're definitely seen as background elements. So I'm going to tap on my little end right here and then drag it all the way down. I think I'm going to go down to about 20%. And that feels a lot more comfortable. Everything's super readable. If you're brand new to Procreate and you want a little bit more practice, I offer a completely free course called Procreate for Beginners. I'll leave a link in the video description and on screen to that. So that's how to create intertwining elements within Procreate. For the free color palette and links to the brushes used, just tap on the link in the video description. You can have access to all of that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more design and lettering tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.